The case for pharmacologic agents to treat hypoactive sexual desire disorder. There's been a huge controversy about uh, hypoactive sexual desire disorder and uh, how best to treat it. And what we really know, and I've been treating hypoactive sexual desire disorder for 25 years, and we call it HSDD for short, is that it really fits a biopsychosocial model. That is, there are psychological factors that contribute to loss of desire, certainly. There are sociocultural factors. But there are also neuroanatomy and neurochemical factors that contribute to loss of desire. We have had, up until a year ago, no FDA-approved pharmacologic treatments for HSDD. We now have one, which is flibanserin, mm -hmm. uh, and it's approved in premenopausal women, although we have data that it is safe and effective in both pre- and postmenopausal women. There is a, still a group of naysayers that think that by offering an, a pharmacologic agent, somehow we're uh, pathologizing women. Well, I have to say it's the same story as we had 30 years ago with depression. Before there were pharmacologic treatments like SSRIs, we were we thought you know depression was all in your head, and you just either have psychotherapy, which does work, or pick yourself up by the bootstraps, or you go on a tropical vacation to feel better. Well, once SSRIs became sort of ubiquitous, we all became familiar with how beneficial affecting neurotransmitters were in uh, helping with, with depression. And so now we have, in 2016, psychotherapy or cognitive behavior therapy, pharmacotherapy or combination. The same is true for hypoactive sexual desire disorder. It is essentially uh, understood in the same way. Anhedonia, which is the loss of interest in things that bring you pleasure, key to depression is specific to the loss of interest in sex with regard to HSDD. So when we think about the, the etiology, while there are psychological factors and psychological treatments, the imbalance in neurotransmitters, particularly dopamine, norepinephrine and on the uh, excitatory side and serotonin on the inhibitory side, what we're trying to do is correct that imbalance. And if there's a pharmacologic option to do that, why wouldn't we use it? Having been myself frustrated for 25 years, knowing that there's only so much I can do for some women, you know, I, I could be the best therapist in the world, and there are certain things that I cannot address. Similar to postpartum depression, I treat it, and I can use good cognitive behavior therapy, but there is a group of women for whom using a pharmacologic treatment, SSRIs, for example, is really necessary. And similarly for sexual desire, I can do good psychotherapy, but if there is a biologic imbalance, you know what? I really need the help from those pharmacologic agents too.